Hello, my name is Chris, and you're watching vSense. So on today's video, we're talking about a Burberry fragrance. This is part of their signature line or their bespoke collection. And the one that we have here today is Hawthorne Bloom. And this is what the box looks like. Very nice. It's it's kind of simplistic and uh, it's kind of, you know, one of those things where you're like, are they going to change the logo now, now that there's a new creative director for Burberry? Because obviously this logo was introduced, Ricardo Ticci, which is the old creative director. Now that they have a new one that came from Bottega, they have changed the logo once again. Let's see how that looks. Maybe they will change these fragrances. Although... I'm not sure if they're keeping them because their actual website has some of them available. This is not the one that I was going to order originally. I was going to order Tudor Rose and that fragrance was not available on the website. It said coming soon. Some of the other ones had limited availability underneath of them. So it's a little hard to say what's going on with this collection itself. But nonetheless, we have here a creation by Francis Kirkshan. He has also created Amber Heath, Tudor Rose, as well as Rose Garden and this one as well. So he's created quite a few of this collection, which is, like I said, their private, more upper scale line itself. This is what the box looks like. Very traditional khaki looking color for Burberry with gold lettering on the back. It does have a percentile here. I know that whenever I first purchased these fragrances, I was a little confused as to what that percentile was. This is the percentage of oil concentration in this fragrance itself. They're all eau de parfums, but they have a little bit of concentration just based on the fragrance that they are, essentially. So when you take this out, pull it up, you do get another Burberry box. This one doesn't have any writing on it anywhere except the logo on the front. And then you open it and there is some information on the fragrance here, as well as it talking about the bespoke collection, the signature range and you know how they're handcrafted how they are supposed to reference a nice beautiful english garden or whatever they're supposed to reference but they're supposed to evoke luxury you know that beautiful feeling of being able to buy whatever you want which none of us can relate to or at least i can't sorry but here's the fragrance it is hawthorne bloom it is a green fragrance you know this is a wild card for me i did decide to branch out I think everyone knows that I like ambery scents, ouds, woodsies, freshies, and for me to get something that's green is a little bit different. Although I do have a really great relationship with green fragrances. I do love number 19 by Chanel, and that one's a very green fragrance. There are a couple of other ones that I do like as well that are also considered to be green fragrances. But this is the first green fragrance that I have purchased from this house. It's actually the only one that's really considered a green fragrance. I guess you can kind of consider Windsor Tonic, but that's more of a freshy than a green scent itself. But here it is. It's a very beautiful bottle. This one is transparent. If you've seen any of the other ones that I reviewed, you can see that the other ones have different colored bottles based on the fragrance that we're talking about. But it does have a logo in the front. It does have some information at the bottom. Just to note, these fragrances are made in Spain. At the time of this video, they are manufactured and distributed by Coty. And Coty is the manufacturer and distributor of all of Burberry's fragrances. So their main collection, as well as their luxury collection. They previously distribute other fragrances like Chloe. They distribute fragrances like Marc Jacobs, Gucci. So they're not known for having luxury lines necessarily, at least not ultra luxury lines like LVMH does or L'Oreal does or Estee Lauder does. But this is one of their luxury lines. You know, they do have one with Gucci as well. It's a fragrance that was launched in 2017. This was part of their original collection. They actually changed the packaging and Ricardo Ticci decided to join the House of Burberry. And then that's where we got that bold font and all caps that says Burberry on it. It used to have the actual initials for the fragrance at the front. And then you can actually get your own initials embossed into it as well. You can't get that done anymore. There's no engraving offered for these fragrances anymore. Um, but yes, this is one of the original ones. It is Hawthorne Bloom, created by Francis Kirkshans. Everyone knows that he's a good perfumer. I mean, let's just say as it is, he is a little snobby. His brand's a little bit overrated, but he is known for being one of the best perfumers in today's market. He's now working for the house of Christian Dior as well as for his. I think he's focusing more on launching 
newer additions for Dior and that's very exciting to see what he does for the house of Dior because I think we were all getting kind of bored with Francis de Machy. but anywho here is the fragrance itself so this fragrance is a green fragrance there's another fragrance that I did a review on my channel which is a Dolce Gabbana velvet line collection so it's their velvet line I don't know if they still manufacture it but it was their private range for Dolce & Gabbana and that fragrance is called Velvet Pure. This kind of gives an air to Velvet Pure by Dolce & Gabbana. It's not as sharp or as green or as going to choke you out as that one. This is going to be floral for sure. It's going to have powdery elements to it. It's going to have green elements to it as well. It's like if you were to grab number 19 and then turn it into kind of like the Dolce & Gabbana yeah. Velvet Pure and then you decide to modernize it, make it a lot better, a lot more refined, a lot more fresh. This is what we get here, which is Hawthorne Bloom. It is a nice scent. It is a floral scent. So you're going to get some iris in here. Like I said, you're also going to get some musk, some jasmine, some patchouli, and some violet in this fragrance. So it is well balanced. Although it's a green scent, you know, a lot of these fragrance houses won't list all of the actual notes that are in the fragrance itself. It is a green scent. It has a lot of green elements to it. I can certainly see that there is some vetiver in here, that there are some other notes that are not listed in this fragrance itself, but it is one of those that's going to be more feminine. So if you do like a fragrance that you want to share with your spouse, if you are a male watching this video and you want to wear a fragrance or this fragrance, you might like it, but it's not going to be your number one pick if you were to go to like the Burberry store and smell all of these fragrances. So I will say that right now, it is not my top pick out of this range. I think that it is very hard to be Amber Heath, which is this guy. This is another Francis Crickshawn creation. It is absolutely one of the best fragrances out on the market. It is so good. So think of Baccarat Rouge done a lot more tastefully, a lot better with a lot more ambery touches to it. Some saffron in there as well, just like, you know, Baccarat Rouge. It's just done very well. And this one itself, although it's nice, it's green, it's floral, it's powdery. It's not anything super unique, but it's not something that's going to be one of the bunch. The scent itself, just because it has that green, fresh kind of element to it, it will be a lot more long wearing than a lot of the other fragrances in this range. For example, High Tea and Rose Garden. Both of those fragrances are very subpar when it comes to wear time. Amber Heath is one of those ones that does wear pretty well, and this is going to be one of those as well because it does have that green element. Typically, green fragrances do have a long lasting quality to them even if it is an iris fragrance it does have that patchouli base which will carry it and it's not going to be a earthy 70s patchouli it's going to be a more modern you know more 2023 type of patchouli even though it was created in 2017 so definitely check this one out let me know what your thoughts on it are like i said it's not my favorite one in this range but it is a fragrance that I would certainly stand by and say that it is done well. It is high quality and that's all that matters here. We want to review fragrances that are going to be the bang for your buck, you know, that they're not just charging you to charge you and that you're getting something really good. By the way, the prices on these is not too bad compared to a lot of other luxury lines. Their price is 271 US dollars. At the time of making this video, they have launched some new fragrances called the Burberry Signatures Extreme Botanicals. They seem to be more oud related fragrances, so I will definitely be checking those out. Although it's just a lot to keep up with, you guys. There is not enough budget in the world <laughs> to buy every single fragrance that's being launched. And although I would really like to, you know, get all those out there for you. I am on a limited budget. So definitely check this guy out. Let me know what your thoughts on it are down below. Make sure to comment, subscribe, share the video if you like it. Make sure to tune in for the next video as well. Thanks so much for your support, you guys. I hope to see you again soon and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.